Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I put together a quick video tonight um, just looking at uh, sketch constraints and one in particular that falls over quite often uh, when using a style spline uh, or fall over for no reason and then quite often if you control Q uh, it will sort itself out and unfail. Um, but it's quite annoying to have something in your tree that falls over randomly, especially if you're delivering files to clients and then they might know how to troubleshoot it. Um, so anyway, I'll just dive in. This is a a uh, form I generated for a video I've never made, so um, this was just a, a challenge to do sort of multi-blend sort of things. Um, so as it happens, this has a spline in it that likes to fall over. Okay, so if I went back up to the uh, rollback, so we just got a quadrant of the model, and I go back to the sketch up the top here, and drag that dimension round. You can see what's happened here is the sketch has fallen over. If I go Control Q, that rebuilds. Uh, so if I go back up here, change this dimension again. Okay, so that sketch falls over. So if we go and have a look in that sketch, what's going on normally is because um, I've got so I've got an intersection curve intersecting with a surface, and then I've got um, curvature continuous constraint on the end. Um, which automatically adds the tangent. More often than not, it's the tangent which has fallen over. So quite often you can just delete the tangent and then just reinstate the tangent. I quite often when I reinstate it, I'll just pick the, um, the CV chain instead of the um, actual curve. And then go tangent. No, that doesn't want to work. Okay, so let's try the spline instead. Okay, tangent. And we go okay. And then if I was to change this dimension in the sketch again, the same thing. See, it's fallen over, but then it hasn't. Okay, let's try again. Okay, it's fallen over. Oh, no, it hasn't. So if we want to get around it, um, something I came up with um, recently on a client job was, so tangency equals, um, basically, uh, 180 degrees, so let's break it down into two. We make uh, get our intersection curve and this uh, construction curve and make those perpendicular. And then I'm going to add perpendicular constraint from this um, the um, spline control polygon segment and that line there, perpendicular, which equals tangent 180 degrees. Okay, so. We just roll forward and then go back up here and change this dimension, see what happens. Hopefully it holds itself together. Okay, it's holding itself together now. I mean, there are limits on what I've done. Um, okay, so it's not falling over anymore, which is great. Because um, it's a real pain when you send something off to a client and then they open it and something's fallen over it, invariably it's the style spline with the uh, tangent constraint. Um, so I'll just show you one other um, little fix, because I recently had one where this little um, fix wouldn't work. I couldn't add a perpendicular um, construction line in that sketch. So what I had to do was break it into two um, two operations for SOLIDWORKS to think about. So I went before that sketch and on that plane I created the intersection, intersection curve and then I created the perpendicular line in a separate sketch. So this gets resolved prior to us um, making anything uh, uh, tangent to that curve. So now if I go into sketch 12, I can, let's just delete that intersection curve, um, and we'll delete that. And so I can go and make this sketch polygon segment perpendicular to that segment in the previous sketch. But now, one other little SOLIDWORKS quirk, if I go and make this um, the, the, the intersection curve from the previous um, sketch and my style spline 
curvature, um, equal curvature, it will add another CV in. Uh, the reason it's done that is because I have dimensioned these two CVs, so it's a real pain. So you have to delete those. So it's four and ten. Now I can go and make this add my equal curvature again, which doesn't add an extra CV because those points aren't constrained. I don't know if this is intentional behaviour, but it's a bit of a pain. Um, just having to delete dimensions and add them again. And 10. Okay. So we end up as, with the same thing as uh, as previously, with this perpendicular, but because that's broken into a separate operation, and that constraint gets resolved before we got the SOLIDWORKS move on to trying to resolve sketch 12, it just seems to be a bit more robust. Um, but this is last case scenario. Um, Okay, so let's just drag some dimensions around and see if that works. I'm using Instance 3D, by the way, if you're not familiar with. Okay, so that's failed. Interesting, eh? Ah, so the perpendicular's failed. It's because it's added a tangent when I added the curvature continuous, so... Another thing you can do, let's just try this. 90 degrees, uh, here we go, will it work, will it blend, okay let's see, okay that's worked but I have noticed that sketch 12 it's got a, uh, it's not fully defined anymore for some reason, uh, it's just one of those ones. You just drag a point, even though it's fully resolved um, and nothing moves, it just, for some reason, thinks the spline is not fully um, resolved or defined. Yeah, and it happens again. Anyway, so there we go. There's a couple of options there. Um, let's reload this. A few options there for, um, for fixing that little problem that pops up. Um, now and then, hope this is useful. So I just thought I'd throw this up quickly on my Saturday night. So yeah. Anyway, if you do find this useful, please uh, consider subscribing. And if anybody's got any other sort of like little bugs like this that annoy them and they found workarounds, let me know because I'm always keen to investigate new stuff. Okay, have a good weekend. Thanks so much, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.